Hello, you are watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major stories from around the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. Bahrain signs first military pact with Israel. ECOWAS holds emergency summit amid coups. Protesters in Brazil demand justice for Moise Kabagambe. And security workers at London Hospital go on strike. In our first story, Bahrain has become the first Gulf country to sign a military pact with Israel. Defence ministers from both states signed a memorandum of understanding on February 3rd. As per an official statement, the agreement will advance intelligence cooperation and a framework for exercises. It also includes cooperation between the defence industries of both countries. This was Israeli Defence Minister Benny Gantz's first official visit to Bahrain since the signing of the Abraham Accords in 2020. The US brokered agreement was designed to normalise ties between Israel and Arab countries. President Isaac Herzog became the first Israeli head of state to visit the UAE in January. Aside from US pressure, Bahrain and the UAE's closeness to Israel is considered to be motivated by mutual hostility towards Iran. al Mayadeen has also reported that Israel is looking to build a permanent navy base in Bahrain. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia and Oman are thought to have set up clandestine relations with Israel. The three countries are also part of a US-led joint naval exercise in the region. Palestinian factions, including the PLO, have rejected these actions as a betrayal of their cause. Members of the Arab League had passed the Khartoum Resolution to boycott Israel after the 1967 war. This was renewed under the Arab Peace Initiative in 2002. States had agreed not to normalize ties with Israel until Palestinian statehood was achieved. The socialist movement of Ghana or SMG has condemned recent actions taken by ECOWAS. Since 2021, the West African bloc has suspended Mali, Guinea and Burkina Faso after coups in all three states. The Burkinabe army announced on January 24th that it had deposed President Roj Kabore. ECOWAS expelled Burkina Faso last week. The bloc held an emergency summit in Ghana to discuss the situation on February 3rd. The ECOWAS Commission's president stated that the military had shown interest in working towards restoring constitutional order. As such, it is not imposing sanctions on the country. ECOWAS imposed sweeping sanctions on Mali in January, saying that the junta had failed to organize elections. The socialist movement of Ghana has pointed out that the coups in West Africa took place amid mass unrest and received populist support. In the case of Guinea, protests against President Conde's third run for office were heavily repressed. Meanwhile, the security conditions in Mali and Burkina Faso had deteriorated considerably. Both countries have witnessed protests against imperialist forces, especially France. The socialist movement of Ghana argues that foreign powers imposed a neoliberal economic model which led to insecurity, poverty and debt. This was accompanied by a democratic order that has not addressed the needs of the people. SMG adds that the West, led by France and the US, has resorted to setting up military bases and defence agreements. These are primarily to defend multinational corporations involved in resource theft. SMG argues that all of this is taking place under the guise of fighting Islamic insurgencies. The movement argues that draconian sanctions cannot lead to the construction of democratic societies in the region. It is reaffirmed that the people of West Africa are the only true guarantors of democracy. We now go to Brazil, which has witnessed a series of protests after the brutal killing of Moise Kabagambe. The 24-year-old Congolese refugee was found dead on January 24th in Rio de Janeiro. He had gone to the Tropicalia kiosk in Bara di Tijuca, where he worked as a kitchen helper. Kabagambe approached his boss to ask for two days of unpaid wages. Family members told news agencies that it was then that his boss picked up a piece of wood to hit him. Police reportedly also showed them a video showing a group of men attacking Kabagambe with a baseball bat. Speaking to Fola di Se Paolo, his family said that the police did not arrive until 40 minutes later. He was found tied up on a ladder and was already dead. His family held a protest outside the Tropicalia kiosk on January 29th. On February 1st, the Rio de Janeiro government said that it was suspending the Tropicalia kiosk's operations. Authorities have so far arrested three people. The UNHCR has confirmed that Moise and his family had been recognised as refugees by Brazil. The country is reportedly witnessing an increase in violence against the black people. According to the Congolese embassy, Moise Kabagambe was the fifth immigrant killed in Brazil since 2019. Demonstrations demanding justice have been scheduled in Sao Paulo and outside the Tropicalia kiosk for February 5th. And for our final story, we take a look at a landmark strike at the Great Ormond Street Hospital, or GOSH, in the UK. Organised by the United Voices of the World, or UVW, security guards at the facility staged a walkout, walkout on February 2nd. They are outsourced workers employed by Carlisle Support Services Company. A majority of them belong to black, ethnic minority and migrant backgrounds. The guards have pointed to lesser pay and benefits compared to the majority white workers who are directly employed by the NHS. They are denied equal enhanced maternity leave, sick pay, overtime, annual leave entitlements and pensions. For example, security guards are paid the statutory minimum as maternity pay. Meanwhile, NHS workers receive 8 weeks full maternity pay and 18 weeks of half pay. The 6 week long industrial action is said to be, become the longest in the history of the National Health Service. According to UBW, the guards have also been subjected to racial slurs and union busting attempts. 
Meanwhile, 83 cleaning workers have also filed an indirect racial discrimination case against the hospital. Despite being successfully hired under the NHS in 2021, they still have not received the same pay and benefits as the rest of the staff. A rally in solidarity with the striking security guards was held outside the hospital on Thursday. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.